In this section, we're going to talk about how to actually perform a test of hypothesis. So in section 9.2, we talk about the critical value approach to hypothesis testing. So it turns out there are two ways of testing hypothesis. It's called two approaches, two different ways of doing the same thing. The first one that we're going to talk about in this section is called the critical value and the second approach is the p-value which we look at section 9.3 so what is this critical value so the critical value is actually going to serve as our criterion remember we need to have some kind of a criterion as to whether to reject or not to reject the null hypothesis so this is going to be our guide as to whether to reject or not so what is the critical value this critical value is actually the cutoff point. It's the boundary, if you will. The boundary which um, separates two regions for us. So it's the cutoff point. And this cutoff point is actually based on how far, that is the distance away from the center of the distribution, how far the sample mean is from the hypothesized value of the mean. Remember, in chapter 9, we're doing this for population mean so that's all the critical value does it actually judges or decides how far before it is too far uh, the sample mean is from the hypothesized mean so we can judge the result statistically significant that's what critical value does now how do we get this critical value the value of critical, uh, the actual value of the critical value, it really depends on the size of our test, which remember we also called it the significance level of the test, or namely alpha. So that's what decides on the critical value. Now, as far as this distance away from the hypothesized mean, um, we're going to take a look at that distance in terms of how many standard deviation we are away from the mean. Okay, so that's what we're going to do later on. We're not going to see any formulas in this section. It's just more of, again, of a conceptual idea, and we just work it without data. So here is an example I've made up. So let's say my alternative hypothesis here is that the mean of the population is greater than 50 and the null hypothesis the status quo uh, reads that the mean is 50 so here is what i have done i have drawn this normal distribution of course we're going to assume normality right and the reason is because i'm comparing the sample mean to the pop uh, to the hypothesized population mean and from chapter 7 we know that the sampling distribution of the sample mean is either normal or very close to normal depending on our assumptions right so here's what uh, i'm just making this up now arbitrarily that means on our own doing Arbit arbitrarily i'm going to call two standard deviation okay so two standard deviation for significance in other words if i see sample mean that is two or more deviations away from the center of distribution the hypothesized mean then we're going to judge the results statistically significant meaning we're going to reject the null hypothesis because the sample mean is simply too far away from the center of the distribution so notice how in this drawing this is where the cutoff is the critical value the boundary and this critical value is called critical in that it it separates two regions from one another the region to the left of it is called the non-rejection region in highlighted in yellow and the region that's above it is called the rejection region and what is this rejection region well the name implies it is the region in which we reject the null hypothesis and again this cutoff of two deviation that's just me somebody may say well i want three deviations and that's fine but the whole premise of it premise of it being how far we decide we want the mean be away from the hypothesized mean before we judge the result significant and that's what the critical value is now how do we find the value of the critical value remember it depends on the alpha and i'll show you how to do that in a few minutes 
So um, here I just put in words. If you're giving two deviations above hypothesized mean, um, oh, by setting my cutoff at two deviation, that means I'm actually giving this much, everything that's below two deviation, I'm giving this much, what I call benefit of a doubt to this null hypothesis. But if I see something that's as extreme or more extreme than two deviation, then we're going to say, well, maybe something else is going on. Maybe the hypothesized mean is not accurate. And that benefit of a doubt is what we call the sampling variation, sampling error, if you will, that we're giving. Because we know with sample, we're not going to get exactly 50. I may get 49, 48, 51, 52, 53, whatever it may turn out to be. But if I get significantly larger values, because my alternative was greater than, right? Remember up here? The alternative is greater than so if i see significantly larger values than 50 maybe 56 58 57 something like that then we're going to refute or reject the null hypothesis so there you have it that's what that two deviation uh, is now um, in your textbook the author has defined those two regions that i define in highlight yellow and red so the rejection region Remember, this is the region in which we reject the null hypothesis. The non-rejection region, that region was highlighted in yellow. This is the region for which we do not have support for the alternative. And all of this region, these values below the critical value here, uh, all of these provide support for the null hypothesis. And the critical value, again, of course, uh, is going to be the value of a test statistic. Now, this notice in his definition of rejection, non-rejection, critical value, he uses the words test statistic, test statistic, test statistic. This test statistic becomes more obvious when we go to section 9.4, where we actually conduct a hypothesis test. But so I just wrote down something for you here to see. Our test statistic is going to be actually a formula for us later on. So it's going to be a number a value that we calculate based on the sample statistic that's used to test the hypothesis and hence the name test statistic okay again as i have this ends up being a formula for us in section 9.4 now here i just want to create these rejection non-rejection regions what determines again the rejection non-rejection region are those critical values in the case where the alternative is not equal to, remember that's a two-tailed test, here's where you can kind of see now what we mean by the tail ends of the distribution. And that's indeed why it's called a two-tailed test, because there are two rejection regions. One is, is on the upper tail, the other one is in the lower tail. And those are the two rejection regions. The rejection regions are defined by the critical values. Okay. In a case where the alternative is less than, well, there's only one rejection region. And here we reject four extremely small values. <clears throat> Remember, the, based on our cutoff criterion. So the result uh, is what we call a left tail test because the rejection region again is in the left tail end of the distribution the critical value is this cutoff point <clears throat> okay and finally if the alternative is greater than some value the hypothesized value then our critical value is located in the right tail and to the right of it we reject the null to the left of it we do not reject the null and that's the reason for calling it a right tail test <clears throat> so again the reference to two left or right tails is where the rejection regions are located and that's that's how they are categorized remember very important the way we know whether we have two tailed left tail right tail depends on the alternative not the null but alternative depending on these three configurations so um, the significance level of our test remember that alpha alpha determines our critical values based on z test 
A Z test is our test statistic that we'll see in section 9.4. Our test that we will be doing conducting is called a Z test. Okay. Now, here is what again, this is an excerpt from your book. Based on a Z test, so that's why I have now a Z distribution, the standard normal. And the cutoff point based on alpha, the size of our test. For the two tail test, we put half of alpha in the right tail, half of alpha in the left tail. And the cutoffs, the critical values, if you will, z alpha over 2 here, negative z alpha over 2 there. Remember this notation z sub alpha we looked at in chapter 6, and it's coming back here. <clears throat> and of course, we had that also in chapter 8 when we talked about confidence intervals. And in the case of a left tail test, in alpha, the region to the left, alpha is whatever the significance level of the test is, the size of our test is. And in this case, that would be negative z of alpha. That's our cutoff point. For the right tail test, this would be a positive z sub alpha, the cutoff. That's our critical value. And alpha would be our size of our test. Okay. Now, this is, remember, we did this exercise in, again, chapter 6. So here is that exercise we did. It's just a reminder of that exercise. So notice, we already know these z values, z scores. So a z sub 05, for example, 1.645, we have already established these. So we do not need to reinvent the wheel and see where those came from. If you still want to know where these numbers came from, go back to uh, chapter 6. And the exercise we did in class actually showed how we found those numbers. So here I'm making up an example. Okay, this is, of course, an exercise from the book, but without reading the exercise itself, suppose here we're doing a test of hypothesis. Well, because there are two rejection regions, right? There is a rejection region on the left, a rejection region to the right. So we know that this must be a two-tailed test of hypothesis. That means the alternative is not equal to, correct? We know that again because there are two rejection regions now the cutoff is at 1.645 and there you go at 1.645 the z the z is 1.645 the area to the right of that is 05 so this is going to be 05 that's 1.645 so what is the size of our test alpha well alpha you have 05 in the right 05 in the left so i added them up my alpha is 10 percent that's the size of my test. So they must have done a hypothesis test where the size of a test or the significance level is 10%. And our critical values are these cutoffs, 1.645, negative 1.645. Notice we have two of them in the case of a two-tailed test. And there you have it. Now, in this next exercise, we are given... For example, I'm doing these even numbers, and it's good because I have a right tail, left tail, and two tail. So the question reads, determine the critical value in the case of a right, left tail, its value, or values that would be for the two tail test. For one mean Z test. Okay, so that's, again, one mean Z test is what we will be doing in section 9.4. So in preparation for that, that's, that's what we're doing right now. So, um, here is uh, in section, uh, exercise number 40. Try not to look at number 42 for now. So, remember non number 40, we're doing a right tail test, alpha 05. So, I went ahead under the distribution. This is a Z. And alpha 05, from this table up here, remember alpha 05, the area to the right is 1.645. So, I located 1.645 and drew this line and separated the, the region to the right is the rejection region. The region to the left is the non-rejection region. So the question was determine the critical value. The answer to the critical value is 1.645. In exercise number 42, we're doing a left tail test, alpha 05. So there you have it again for this one. Uh, this time alpha is 05. Right, so I have the area to the left is 05, and that means 
this should be 05, right? And of course, the cutoff is again negative 1.645. This time we get it by reflection, by symmetry of the distribution. Remember, 05 to the right, pause on the positive side, that's Z is 1.645. If you reflect this number over to the other side, you get this answer. In exercise 44, two-tailed tests with alpha 05. Well, for two-tailed tests, remember, we're going to divide alpha into two. So here's what I've done. For the two-tailed test, here's my normal distribution, the standard normal. The Divide your alpha by two. So this is now 025, right? So I'm going to actually look at 0.025 up here. The z-score is 1.96. And 1.96 is going to be the cutoff point. We're going to have a positive 1.96 and a negative 1.96. The positive gives you the right tail, 025. The negative 1.96 is the cutoff, the boundary of the lower region, the lower tail, if you will. And that's 025. And there we have, I believe that's all in this section. That's the answer to those exercises. So hopefully you followed, and once again, this is the essence of how the critical value is going to work. It's the logic of hypothesis test based on critical value. Once we actually see a numerical value, a numerical exercise, I should say, in section 9.4 and a couple of sections from now, then all of this, trust me, all of this will make more sense. So don't worry, I know it's conceptual, it's... Um, it may be even confusing, but um, we'll, we'll clear some of the ambiguities, some of the confusion, or some of the fogs later on as we go through uh, a numerical example with an actual data. Okay, so with that, we are done with this lecture. So we'll get ready for our next lecture, which is in section 9.3.